a lot going on. It's about to be true, yeah. Got the grand climax <laughs> or climb X coming up. <clears throat> Who got X in the Eclipse X and formerly Twitter, right? But X is really 10, not X equals 10 in terms of the the um alphabet but x10 is the um roman numeral for x yeah they want to hype it up because it's coming to everything they've been working to destroy has been coming to a head when these people talk about white supremacy most people are thinking they're talking about, let's say, institutional uh, white supremacy, like institutional, um, what they call glad handing or, or ways to keep so-called melanated people out of positions of power. But as you can see in the past years, that's not really been the case. You know what I mean? It may not have ever been the case, really, but... They um, use these these people as pawns and puppets to, you know, keep their little syndicates and whatever going. So. Um, they 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 really have nothing to do with what's happening astronomically and all of that with the eclipse and none of that. They really don't have anything really to do with it, but they would rather us believe that they do to be able to then capitalize on the the world uh, anticipation for the event and then try to couple that with a series of false flag um, endeavors to help make it seem like it's real. So then hopefully open up the way for them to finally use the actual technology in which now they're trying to make people believe like whales is flying in the sky and all that type of shit, which which on their times table would mean then that the end of that whole situation is not far behind. So that's why they can't really pull the trigger on a lot of stuff. That's what essentially the movie Oppenheimer was about. It was about the duplicity of, of people who turn a blind eye to their ambition and then use their ambition as an excuse to do things just because they can without the full ramifications of what those things will incur from that point on you see can you hear anything can y'all hear me can you hear me okay okay cool so because they can't really have a a a uh anchor in making any of that really happen they have to orchestrate and use theater. That's why they refer to it as as theaters, like theaters of war, and things like that to help um, encapsulate what they're trying to get across. So they showed you in the movie um, something with the wire with Anthony Mackie and Damson, who <clears throat> they showed you they was going to use original people who were basically see through robots to help fulfill their agenda. And so that's what these people are that we see in these these modern plays that they keep putting out, like Fannie Willis and these type of people. Like, remember, her her father allegedly was a panther that was there with Hampton or Shakur or whoever else. However, he wound up not going to jail or whatever it is. And like all of the rest of the Panthers, they all went into Harvard and Yale and shit and became, you know, part of the 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 power structure. So. Was it ever really real? Yes, it was real for certain people. And before those, when those, by the time those people realized that they were a part of this whole orchestration, it was basically too late for them because they, you had actual people who were really down with it and thought it was really, really what they were saying it was when really it was just another form of controlled opposition. You know what I'm saying? 
which which is the problem with all modern movements that they've been creating today. Most of them and most of us are put in positions of <clears throat> choosing between one, let's say, ideology over another, which is natural in a certain course. However, it can also create a never-ending cycle of having to constantly filter out the new forms of information coming from these people. So because the enemy can't create anything, you see, evil can't create anything, it's locked into redundancy and repetitiveness just by changing. So it can't really create anything new. So what it'll do is it'll change the way something looks and then give it an inverted story of what you liked in the original and then say that if you don't like that, you know, something's wrong with you, knowing that they put substandard, subpar preparation and, and, and energy into creating a subpar product because they can no longer hire people based upon merit. They have to hire them based upon uh, whether or not they can, you know, fulfill the agenda. So nothing is there, therefore genuine. Therefore, the only thing that's genuine is what real people put out in the world. So this is why now everybody else is famous and everybody that's that's mainstream famous is seen as not real because they're not. We were the last era to to fight the power and 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 you know what I'm saying and do all of that. Like Larry Davis, like all that type of stuff was like in our era. Like the 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 heavy, heavy entrepreneurs, like from the ground up, from whatever means necessary, niggas, like all of that was our era. They phased all of those guys out and they put them into tech and and lawyers and, and stuff like that, which is which is good. However, once you escape the hood, you, you can't really go back. Like you can go back, but you can't really go back, go back like that. You see what I'm saying? Because that's just how it works. That's how it was meant to work. So it's the same thing when it comes to us as, as more, you know, uh, from let's say the ancient times, you know what I'm saying? To now and all of that, like, the the glory like the 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 grandeur the the extreme opulence of everything you know that that's already kind of gone <laughs> you know what i'm saying so we can celebrate that that's why you know moorish culture or or moorish american culture in that way is one of the few openly celebrated things you know what i mean um not amongst Moors, but amongst other people that are not, you know what I mean? In the context that we are put in a position where we are always having to defend, you know, what it means to be a Moor by people who say that they aren't based upon what they've been taught. They believe that Moors are, which was a misnomer, you know what I mean? And so, then being hit with the phenomena that that's not how it maintains itself in other cultures, like other cultures, you know, will understand that because they, those cultures deal with birthright, nationality, inheritance, like they not really function in the way that these other niggas be function. Which then celebrates the, div the diversity, you see what I'm saying, that exists with us as so-called Moorish people descending from these people who existed from the time before us that had their history <coughs> revamped to exclude the grandest aspects of it to those of us that were meant to believe that we came from toil specifically. <coughs> you know what I mean? So like what you see in New York right now is basically what you saw at the fall of Granada as a as a go-to for people like us. You know what I mean? 
or what you what people might have seen at the fall of Rome, where you have such an influx of so-called immigrants and people from the other side of the world. Um, you know what I mean? Coming in and then trying to exert uh, influence, that's when it becomes a matter of now the, the nationals versus the denizens versus the citizens. This is what you would read about in Plato's Fall of the Republic or Voltaire's Candide. You know what I'm saying? Um, which were all, which was really all about the fall of the, the, what was the grandeur of what we today would call the Moorish Empire, but what some people would call like, uh, the Papenheim or the, the, uh, Corvinius, right? Or the Friesings, which are all of these European, so-called European, which is really Western Asian, uh, aspects of those Moorish or ancient, let's say, canonic clans or tribes that went in those areas and settled and eventually became known as that. Like all the Phoenicians were, were basically Hebrews that decided like, we're not going to be Hebrew like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to be like this. But their grandparents and all of them was Hebrew, just like their grandparents was basically Egyptian and Chaldean. You see what I'm saying? It's just like today you would be melanated, but then your mom's is Boricua and then and then your grandfather was like uh, Beijing. You see what I'm saying? But you was born here in America. So imagine that that type of situation happening. But back then, you know what I mean? Which brings in this type of what I'm saying. This right here is on the left. This dude is from the house of orange this big up to knowledge itself on facebook um this was uh again a portrait of leopold one wearing the order of the golden fleece exactly holding right the urn the nautilus cup which is basically contained the the holy sacrament the holy oil of the last emperor before them so when you see them with the nautilus cups and the and the urns and the globes like within that is the holy sacrum what they was able to harvest from the from the other people principal said in order to to add on to what you regard people from other nations who deal with nationality birthright inheritance it sheds light on the fact that when I speak to people, other nations, letting them know I'm a more from America, there's never any pushback. Exactly. As if they already knew and just wanted to hear me say exactly. That was been in my experience as well. But that's because of stuff like this, that during the Renaissance period, they came in and repainted all of that. You can see this face right here. Right. <coughs> Look like it's mad dark under this. More than just the shadow. So they probably just blocked the face out, but this allegedly is the original. So because they did this duality Gemini stuff throughout the centuries, you see what I'm saying? You automatically think when you think of Leopold and these type of people, you're thinking of white people when you think it's really these people. Who, who like I said, goes back to the 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 the, the, the Pappenheim and, and the, um, the Gulifs and the Ibelines and these that were eventually deposed and put into camps and eventually broke out and evolved into certain what they would call Egyptians or Egyptians, which you can read about in the book uh, Ancient and Modern Britons. Exactly. Also, just like you said, uh, brother, <clears throat> brother Al, the Picti, the Pictish, or the Picuni, or the Pianchi which also brings you back to the Pictish or the, the so-called Blackfoot here in America. You know what I'm saying? So as you see, the brother from Orange, from the House of Orange, he's draped in the red, white, and blue, right? That's because that's how the Dutch, that's how the Dutch Moors was rolling, you see?
like we read here. So back when he was rolling, this was they was with the red, white, and blue, just like the um French. Now today it's shared by the Russians as well. During the Women's History Month, remember that Sojourner Troop's speech was translated to minstrel vernacular by a white woman. She didn't speak in a stereotypical Southern dialect because she wasn't from the South and she spoke Dutch. And she spoke Dutch. Why is this important? Did you know Sojourner's, Sojourner Truth's first language was Dutch? The version, the version of her speech we are taught today, Ain't I a Woman, was a version transcribed years later by a white woman who rendered her speech in what she imagined to be Negro slave speech. But ain't nobody said she was a slave because, again, she was a part of the Dutch Empire which explains why she could sit there and be talking to Lincoln. He wasn't just some slave off the street. Because at that time, the Dutch and the Germans and the French and the, and the Prussians and the, the Burgundies and the Lombards and all of these was melanated people. It's not fiction. This is what it was or is. Because these were the people who were able to, because they were of their connection to Renata and all of that, were able to then go set up satellite kingdoms once they converted or made whatever deals or became whatever type of pirate or mercantile kingdom to preserve whatever they was, whatever the culture was that was being wiped out by the Inquisitory. That's why we all, a lot of us in that grew up middle class, went to private schools that was basically like run by Lutherans or whatever, or Catholics or, or you know, some sort of, you know, situation like that. But then on Sundays, would go to the so-called black church. See what I'm saying? So you got to remember the fall or what we perceive to be the fall came at a time when like this is this was Herodotus's understanding of the world based upon the Phoenician and all of that situation that they had popping back then. Scythians, Moors, Celts, Moors. Um, Garamant's Moors, Susan's Moors, or let's say melanated, darker skinned people. So whites and them is so circulated here in what would become Pizarro. Moreau, Moors, all of this is more. All of this over here is the Americas. See what I'm saying? Broken off from Africa. All of this breaks off. And then this is the African plateau. This gets flooded back out. And this is the back of the skull. And all of this right here becomes that. You see what I'm saying? So when Harry Dotus and them is talking about Atlantis and all of that, you know, they're talking about that. So then you say, well, what, what's the story? Like this is, you can't really see it, but this is from an old map. I was able to snap a quick picture of America, one of the old joints from something I was watching. See all the red flags? See America? Look, with the giant trees no more flags around the port just like it says in around the coast just like it says in um time walker by meredith quinn 
as well as Golden Trader the More by Edward Beauville. Let me read that. I go up another one. See, the Ford de Lou, but look at the symbol. Now you see the symbol, right? This right here, right? We know that as the Fleur de Lou, right? But this existed before that. The Merovingian didn't reconcile themselves. They wasn't at that point at this time. You see all of these castles? So that means that they inherited this from them when they married into the families over here. You know what I'm saying? See the castles? More socks, man. See all of the flags, right? This is all America. Look. Look the coast. Look the castle right here. Where's where's the castle that was right here? <laughs> Between Florida and Louisiana. Where's that at? That's gone. See? All of the Moors flags and so-called royal flags you got the giant trees you got the castles and the cities then behind you got another one so this is this is the time like this is the time we're talking about well Herodotus came out, you know, way after so-called the the Renato and all that came way after Herodotus, but I'm just saying that the period in the peoples that he's talking about is the, is our peoples, which is we as being the descendants of them, which then is supposed to give us certain natural rights so long as we still identify with that type of understanding of who we are. This is from the book Origin of the Surname. Right. The changing of names. This is on Facebook, too. A similar practice prevails in the various Negro tribes. The Greeks in olden times used to change their names on the smallest pretense and with the greatest indifference. The emperors of Japan and those in China after their death received new names. See? With us, women... With with us, a woman changes her name when she marries among the Caribs in the Antilles. Antilles is the Caribbean, which is the the northwest Mediterranean. Um, and as the present day when the Cape Verde Islands, a liberated slave trade takes the name of its old master. The adopted person substitutes the name of the person who adopts him for his own. So again, these people who didn't exist at a certain point came into existence and were then given certain names, you see what I'm saying, based upon the names that were already here. And so once married into the Johnston family, you see what I'm saying, they can produce somebody like Sojourner Truth or somebody like Pastor Beverly Randolph, you see what I'm saying? Or somebody like like Abraham Africanus. See what I'm saying? Or somebody like John Hanson Bay, who allegedly is from Swedish royalty, because his people's was from Sweden, which at the time was just everybody over there was just as black as us. Creating the maritime trade over the slaves. In 1568, Philip enacted a law that the Moors who lived in Spain should abandon the use of their particular idiom. See? and of their national names and surnames and substituted in their stead for Spanish idioms. That's when they took L from the end of the name and then put it on the front. See what I'm saying? Where they would take amor or amor as an adjective to describe an individual and then apply it to an action like love. You see what I'm saying? Or 
a piece of land, uh, a, a piece of, of fertile land on the coast, like the moors of Scotland, you see? He hoped to make new men of them, to denationalize them, if we may use the term, and to merge them into his own people. He had an appreciation of the value of proper names, but like all despotic sovereigns, he was blind to the influence of the time, of time, which alone produced a gradual fusion of a conquering with a conquered people more especially when differences in religion add their overwhelming weight to one side of the balance. The Moors obeyed but still retained their national feelings and religious beliefs. Later, however, when they were compelled to choose between exile on the one hand and apostasy on the other, they returned to their old country and carried back with them a member a number of Spanish names. Accordingly, uh, in several verses, it goes on. But this explains why, when they say, well, why don't we call our Moors ourselves Moors today? Well, how come my family didn't know? Because of what I'm telling you, because all of this happened after 492, AKA 1492. The Mauritanian families descended from the Andalusian Muslims right? Muslims, we still find the names Perez, Santiago, Valenciano, Arag and Aragon. See? Names which have sometimes led European authors into error and made them fancy that they saw apostates from Christianity among the descendants of the martyrs of Islam. No, because the people that established what eventually became Valenciano or Valencia, Aragon, um, a, a star, which was the last so-called stronghold for, Christ, for for that form of old Christianity. Uh, they was melanated people too. The robbers whose trade it was to carry men away and sell them as slaves needed no legal compulsion to change the names of their slaves. The, precau the precaution which they naturally took in this matter baffled the researchers to dis dis disconsolate disconsolate parents who could only endeavor to recover their lost children by a description which was always imperfect and always uncertain. In modern times, the same system has been adopted. Although it has not been dictated by equally prudential motives, the laws of Christian Europe have even in our own times legalized the sale of slaves. And soon as a Negro had landed in the colonies, it was usually the purchaser to give him a new name. Well, remember, Negroes up until the late 1800s was really, really Caucasian people and poor people. The enslaved so-called Moors, POWs, they're the ones that's being labeled contraband, POWs, um, Indians, and whatever else. So again, when Philip, who was a melanated Black nobility European, right, this is after... 1492. So now this is the, the changeover now. So now this is when the the broken Rome, or what you see what I'm saying? And the people are not loyal to the time that was established before this. This is when they're now trying to reinterpret and rebrand everything and get rid of all of the stuff. And then those of us that was against them doing that. You understand? So when they keep showing us the same pictures of St. Maurice, that's not St. Maurice. That's that's a bunch of different people <laughs> that they just put in under Maurice's name to make it seem like he was this one dude that looked different in every picture. <laughs> in every community in Europe, got a different statue, got a, you know what I'm saying, got a different look. So it's the same thing with this. When we're finding all and seeing all of these old things that they got, that they don't even really be hiding. They just don't show nobody. Um, like it's, this says, sandstone statue of an unknown black knight said to be a part of the funerary monument at Johann 
von Bothmar. See, Bothmar. Thus, it may be Johann von Bothmar. This may be him. Because why would they put a so-called Negro slave at the head and carve him into <laughs> the wood and the stone and all of that if that's how they even did it? Why would they go to the trouble of doing that for somebody? You see, he's standing next to the phoenix, which again is showing the ties and the connection to those of us over here because the people who's phoenix, uh, connect to the phoenix over here was the people, again, from Louisiana. See, he's got his sword over it. So he must have been, or they must have been in allegiance in the protectorate over that part of the land. Because you see right here, there's a, like a tree. Right. So these, these images of the Madonna and all that, this is normal. Like, this is all over the place. O over there. It ain't just in Russia. It's all over. They just don't publicize it like that. They'd rather you talk about the Russian orthodoxy and stuff like that, which is dope because they, they don't hate on this. They'll show you pictures of them bowing down to it and, and worshiping it and putting it in, you know, perspective. They not haters. Because, the, again, the Renaissance didn't hit Russia like that. Exactly. Because all of that was a part of the, under the reign of the, of the so-called kingdom. You know what I'm saying? So us today, that's just basically remembering, right? And thus going into our name. Because remember, we're taught that our names are like this because of slavery. You know what I'm saying? Like we're like this because we was a slave. But the problem with that is... Um, None of us were ever enslaved. Like right? outside of you going to jail, none of us were enslaved like that. Like we weren't necessarily, well, no, you was forced to go to school if you were, but you know what I'm saying? It's it's not like there's ways around the stuff they do. Essentially, it all comes down to what we agree to. You know what I'm saying? In whatever form it is. Like for years, we was taught like this, for instance. Since we're talking about that. For years, we was taught that um, this in the middle This right here, right? They told us that this is the sun. You know what I'm saying? That this is a representation of the sun. Right? But it's not. This is a representation of earth. Right? And this, right, behind it is the representation of the so-called eagle which can also be seen as a symbol of Scorpio, right, in the, in the astrological symbology. But essentially, this represents the, the soaring eagle, right, whose mirror is either the owl or the, the raven. It's either the eagle, the owl, the raven, the crow, right? So, yeah. So the POWs, like we were talking about, whatever. So the descendants of those POWs were re-educated to believe that their names were actually belonging to white people. And then after a generation of that education, they began to enforce that type of understanding. And those white people came up with different circumstances and stories about these ancient pictographs that they knew they knew nothing about. So one of those stories they told us was that this whole thing, like you said, was a calendar, which... It is to a degree, but it's also the story of our Earth. You see what I'm saying? 
uh, goes through all of the different um, upheavals to balance itself out. So this ego behind this is the same as this thing. You see? This is the same thing. It's just, see, here go the head, here go the point, that's the point. Because they're always following the same situation. You see, Enri, this is another name for Christ or Yeshua, right? So the 33, that's the, that's the sacrum. That's the uh, based upon the spinal column, right? But it's really based upon the flow that comes from the spinal column down to the sacrum and then drips into the coccyx. This is the, the holy oil. You see what I'm saying? That is passed down genetically from father to son and then from, you know what I'm saying, um, son to husband, husband to wife. You see what I'm saying? And all of that, or how it's supposed to go, which is why when they was doing the syphilis tests on the people in in the Tuskegee thing, they kept drawing this, the fluid from the spine because they was finding that in between the visits, no matter how much they was giving them, the sacrum was still flowing and it was still untainted by all of the. So the body was decaying, but based upon whatever was happening with them spiritually and them wanting to be better, the sacrum was still unaffected. You see, which then they cross reference with what was happening with the Henrietta Lack stuff that they had, because that represented DNA from the black man. And they got the DNA from this so-called black woman whose name wasn't even Henrietta Lacks, but whatever. And then used all of that to try to create synthetic versions of that. Through that discovery, then they were able to break through on how to reinvest and, and reestablish the drawing of the adrenochrome which had been shut down for a certain period of time in their little culture, right? So they needed mass amount of bodies and mass amount of people that they could disappear at one point. And so, you know, eventually we get into World War I, World War II. You see what I'm saying? All to satiate the gods of this earth, which is what this represents. You see what I'm saying? So whenever you see the rappers sticking their tongues out all the time, we say, oh, that's Kali and all that. Like, yeah, it is. But that's a version of this as well. You see what I'm saying? And so the Freemasons going through their little rituals and stuff, they're just really following the old rituals that they was doing to reinvest themselves into this type of, of energy. And keep it prevalent in the realm, even though the realm is moving beyond the belief part of it. Yes, that's another word, Timothy. It's also called holy oil, right? The holy oil, the sacrament, the um, um, the holy grail, all of that type of stuff. They was they was into that. So, like I said, all of that is happening at a period in which our people. Our people, let's say, being human beings or not human beings, let's say man and woman at the time are, you know, working together. But towards the, the great schism started to happen. That's when everything was done. Remember, the Moors are the ones that re-educated Christendom. They're the ones that brought civilization back to what it was at the time, because, again, they were the ones coming in the vein Right, using using the religion of Islam to couch all of the high spiritual stuff that they was disseminating through everybody that was coming to learn with them prior to this. And then thus splitting up or splitting away from the pale Arabs who themselves were really under the jurisdiction, still under the collusion of Rome through the Jesuits. You see what I'm saying? that they was using to uh, perpetuate their little, they little scheme, you know? And they created a power vacuum, which then led to, you know, the destruction of, of 
our empire because again the more we're dealing with these things and these people the more we're splitting amongst each other and so um they started waging war against us and they started moving into the western portion of africa with you know what i'm saying both over there and over here trying to bring that energy back just another example of where they be taking their stuff from and how it be based on something ancient. This is the ancient fishermen, right? Of the so-called Omec, quote unquote, Maya. And then this again is Steven Spielberg's thing, you know what I mean? Through the dream work, right? Because they're still following, they're still following, yes, the fisher of men, which is, again, Yeshua. And you see he's in a, a ship. They think it's the moon, but see, the moon, again, is the ship. You see the technology in the ship. They always drew the technology into the architecture. They were more literal with it, whereas the so-called Egyptians, they were more figurative. But all of the, the, the form of all of the, the glyphs and the characters and stuff was always the same. You see what I mean? The difference in the style of, or custom of the people and how they view the world. Right? So again, according to the, the book, um, Time Walker, they all, we had armies and stuff that had been left over from the times of the Phoenicians, from the times of the, the uh, gate, what they call the Gaetulians or the Garamants. Hold on, let me stop this cat. Sorry. Yeah, they they had we had armies and navies that were eventually absorbed into what became the Spanish Armada and all that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? After, however, the breakup, right, the split between us and the so-called pale Arabs happened. You know what I mean? Around the same time that the split between the so-called Christian powers who themselves, let's say, were Romans or the descendants of these Romans who were still practicing uh, Roman civilization to a degree through the Catholicism, see? But remember the Church of Rome has been around for 200 years and it was the Church of Rome that adopted that adopted so-called Christianity after the Council of Nicaea. So it was only after the fall of everything, you know what I mean, that they reconsolidated themselves as a group. And prior to that, they had been reduced to warring tribes and trying to find the schism trying to So they had beef also on what language was going to be the predominant language that they were going to codify everything. And that's when they started to break down, you know, the different aspects of what Christ and what Jesus and all this type of stuff would be because they existed at the time. You see what I'm saying? That the fall of all of that that happened. So 
You know what I'm saying? But they all wasn't down with the other nations that were exerting power and trying to take over the ancestral lands as well. And then that led to a, a breakdown between their system, which then allowed the expansion of the so-called uh, kingdom to then establish itself, which then ushered in however many years or ages or however many long we was doing what we was doing. And then it started uh, to break down. The East-West schism, see? Just like the East-West, the East-West rat beef. That didn't just come out of nowhere. That's what it was referred to in terms of how they were viewing the coming into uh, of the kingdom and what was going to be left after it was done. The East-West Schism, also known as the Great Schism or the Schism of 1045, there was also a schism in the Moorish Science Temple. That's what they call it. They call it the Great Schism as well. Uh, with the Eastern Orthodox Churches since uh, 1045, it is estimated that immediately following the beginning of the schism, a slim majority of Christians worldwide, you hear that? Worldwide were Eastern Christians. Most of them, but most of the rest were Western Christians, right? Theological disputes between the Greek, right? The Greek East and the Latin West uh, proceeded in the formal split, which occurred in 1054. The prominent amongst those was the procession of the Holy Spirit, whether leavened and unleavened bread should be used in the Eucharist and the Pope's claim of, uh, to universal jurisdiction in the place of the seed at Constantinople. This is what led to the fall of Constantinople as a people, because once they was broken, Muhammad II, peace be upon him, was able to go in after the siege and then took over the whole thing and then annexed it back to the other, to the empire. Right? Look, 19th century bust of Giovanni Moro, aka Johannes Dictus Mortis, governor of Sicily under the emperor Frederick II. <laughs> and after 1250, the apostolic camera, the magister Prepostius, Prepostius of the Lucra, Italy under Pope Innocent VI. See? So these are the people who was running the church. These was the people who was ruling the land. These were the people who was, was basically uh, working on what they was going to do after the fall of everything that was coming but it started here and so like all things with us they take the they they take the historical narrative and then wait for the seeds of it to replay themselves in modern times and then use the same tactics that they was able to use back then now because nobody remember that this already happened already You know what I'm saying? So everybody think that, okay, well, I got to get these degrees from this lodge and this thing or whatever, but I'm just showing you, like, the stuff already been out here. They don't already have all of it, and it's all based on the ancient stuff that they told us had nothing to do with us. But that's not the case. It had everything to do with us. They just not trying to give us the tools to do that. So we got to go within and dig these books and these things out and make sense of it for ourselves. But from a perspective of actually having a nationality that's not dictated by a foreign international uh, society, such as the District of Columbia or uh, any of these other things that interfere with the true so-called American Republic which existed before even the ratification of that. It's just that we're told that we're not in a republic. We're told we're in a democracy. 
but it is not that. It is a constitutional republic in the most direct sense. It's not even like they were sloppy with the language with that. It was dead, dead on as to what exactly and who exactly and what it is. Democracy is an element, again, that is injected through socialism. And socialism is the, the moral decay and the financial attack of a society, one society over the other, by sending um, agents to um, to inject social concerns as if they are actually real when they're really just tools to fuel disinterest and unrest. You understand? But it works easier with people who have a denationalized sense, you see, of who they are, which is why they've been prepping original people to be foreigners in their own country for, for you know what I mean, for as long as we can remember, or at least that's how it was fostered to us. And why people like Noble Joe Ali and all of that, who undid a lot of the stuff that Marcus Garvey had done in trying to convince us that we was Negroes and we should go and colonize Africa and all of this other garbage. He was successful in deterring and flipping that up, which then caused a lot of problems with people who were looking to take the land specifically, you see and use the land um, to bring immigrants in and then give them a holding or a stance over the, the land of the original people, like they're doing right now. Like they're doing right now. This is not nothing new. This is how they try to replenish society once they know that their base is destroyed. They have no base in the country anymore. Everybody can see that they're corrupt. Everybody can see that they think, but nobody wants to stop their life to stop them, you see? And that's the only thing that they have on their side. People would divest, you see what I'm saying? But again, I would say, however, again, the problem of establishing something and then pushing the button to then take it to the next octave, that's where they're gonna have a problem. They don't, they can act like they're prepared. They can act like they have these scenarios, but ultimately they're not in control of anything that's happening, especially the stuff that they're doing. Because everything they're doing, there's somebody amongst them that's trying to undo it. You notice that? Like everything that they've done, every industry puppet, everything that they, even though these people look successful, they, they are not real. They're not really in the world. They're just in this world that they've created for them. Like, how can you win a Grammy and then you you win like a Grammy out of nowhere and then at the same time you can't fill a stadium? You got to cancel a world tour because. But I could have told you if you only had one song that was paid for by these people to get there, like that don't mean that you got any real. It's not real. So these books. You can check these out, you can get them, and they um, kind of illustrate more of what we're saying in terms of how the denationalization was so important to be able to get Moors to then accept other ideologies, other worldly ideologies that would take them further away from the noble nature and the, the kingdom that their ancestors were a part of. And by kingdom, I'm talking about the, the global empire situation that they are now basically wiped away from. Like anybody that got a house, you got a house right now, you might want to get you some blue paint, some like royal blue or like whatever type of blue paint. It's paint the top of your house blue. Start doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because blue tops don't get don't get burnt up. And if the ray is coming from the top down, it can only hit what it could absorb. So for some reason, blue is not absorbable by them. So yeah, so this so-called Moorish Navy and, and Moorish Army that was situated to help protect 
everybody that all got broken up the last battle being the battle on at lake erie according to the clock of destiny written by cm bay yet those soldiers and those moors here we go one second so you know the the hunting the fishing the absorb absorb being absorbed into the so-called native uh so-called tribes you know like that was natural to us from ancient times like there was no disconnection like the only disconnection comes here in America when we're speaking to people who act like they don't know that this was the Moorish Empire. Like everybody else in the world seemed to know. You know what I mean? But they'd rather be, you know what I mean? Uh, Indians, which is dope. It's just, that's that's the part that got us into this in the first place. Because technically that still meant property. Which we'll get to in a second. I just want to read this. But Spain was not only the nation that had treaties with the Indian of the Americas, Norway, Holland, Denmark, Austria, right? To name a few had secular treaties. These were taken over by France and England, see? Because of a long established rights, see? And both France and England had what colors in their flags? Red, white, and blue, right? <laughs> right. Before the Moorish conquest, Moorish Spain, France, and England were part of the old Roman Empire, with Roman descendants ruling these countries, with civilized peoples now having been brought back their treaties, their territories, and the old ranks would continue on. But the Moors had created another world power because they were still in part an ancient culture with a lifestyle of with lifestyle all interlinked. So the empire had to set aside citizens whose job it was to take care of the international business, much like the empire of Israelites, i.e. displaced Moors, right? Who set aside the Hebrews to do the business, just like you had the Lepono, right? And you had you had the Arawaks, and then you had the Tainos who took care of the business, just like you had the the so-called American Indians, the freedmen who was on the land, but then you had the Moors who was taking care of the business. Why is that so hard for people to understand? Like I don't get it. And what the Moors did was brought back their original treaties and territories to them after they displaced Rome. That's what we just read, right? They gave them back their old territory and put them under the empire. So everybody can eat. Same way today now they have they have national guards, right? Who is the army, and they got them in the street, right? But they're not for civilian population. They're not supposed to be there. <laughs> you understand? 
unless they're preparing for something considerably worse that the police can't work with or the police and the army got to work in conjunction with. Again, from Tom Walker, if it is recorded that Spain or the territories that make up what is now called Spain had to delete the original discovery of the Americas by Spain and the new discovery entered, who was the original individ individual that discovered the Americas prior to Queen Isabella? Keep in mind, recorded facts cannot be disputed. Spain or Spanish people did not drive the Moors out of their alleged country as was stated by Anwar G. Chechny in his book, The Arabic Language, right? Put forth the fall of Granada in 1492. It was a territory purchase between two royal families, the Caliph Abdullah el Zagar and Queen Isabella I for $17 million in the year 1491. The legal procedure, no different than the Treaty of Louisiana in Florida which were land purchases only. So they took the land, right? Which was the only thing they were supposed to be able to control. And in that, based on the surrender of Granada that we read, they still really had no jurisdiction really over the land. They were acting as protectorate for it. It was through the religion, it was through the denationalization, the terror, that forced everybody now to act like because they took the land, they could take the people and remake the people. If the so-called royalty language of Spain is Castilian, which is made up of about 6,000 Arabic words and the rest from Latin, who are the Spaniards and where did they descend from? See, it's rhetorical, the Moors. This was from some clip about Cherokees and Phoenicians being Berbers. Do you know Berber is more? I was just reading an article by Brian Wilkes, a Cherokee language instructor concerning the Cherokee Berber connection. Here's the excerpt, perhaps something you link, blah, blah, blah. Old Cherokee migration legends suggest that ancient connection between the Berbers of North Africa, Morocco, and the Berbers are tribal people of the lands that once stretched from where? Mauritania on the Atlantic Ocean to Libya on the Mediterranean Sea, right? And both are related to the Phoenicians and Carthaginians. So the so-called American Indians, the Carthaginians, the Cherokees, the ancient Moroccans, right? These are all the same people. They're basically saying they're all basically descended from the same people. <laughs> and all of those people had their nationality taken from them. And the only people on earth today that's walking around acting like the nationality that they're dealing with is they own, right? Or people who or people see them as having no nationality, even though they're born here. Think about that. Even though they are born here, people who are not from here think that they have more right to this place than you. You can't be deported nowhere other than the county that you was born in, in the country, right? Now you're politicized, they can't do nothing with you. So they gotta, they gotta bring new slaves in who are gonna go to war, who are gonna work for nothing, right? Who they can politicize over the next four years to then try to bring what's happening now back then, back again. This power was another excerpt. This power was the Vatican of Rome who could no longer be in the religious business because the Moors already had their corporate state. That's the empire. See? Corporate state of religion. No usury. Remember, by religion, you're not supposed to double dip, not supposed to tax or be taxed. You're not supposed to do that. From this came the secular treaties or the Vatican treaties in which the Vatican became the third party to these Moorish treaties. That's why you see the Pope wearing the free sing um, um, 
uh, joint with the Moore's head on it. That's why you see him with this. Or a version of this. Because they're acting as the belligerent trustees over those black nobility families that may or may not still be in position. You know what I'm saying? Who may or may not have married in or blended in or whatever in with whatever clan or nation or whatever. You see what I'm saying? So evidence of these armies is everywhere. The Confederate flag, second national flag of the Confederate States of America. It's the second national one. The first one looked like the, the what they call the centennial flag. The Confederate banner adopted May 1st. See, 1863 Confederate flag banner due to an overwhelming amount of uh, uh, whatever. But essentially, this was the original flag, right, that's being flown by these Moors. To the point they're putting it in money now. So they can't say, look at the more, this day ship. This this is our Navy. <laughs> right? Fighting under the Crescent in South Carolina. See, it don't say United States on the front. It say what? E pluribus unum. Because this was the union. Of all of those reconsolidated malls, all of those reconsolidated states that fought for their own jurisdiction or whatever their cultural nationality was up until that point, those that were able to maintain it. And so what did they do? They couldn't, and then what started happening in Europe, they, they, proxy, they proxy soldiers start now working to replace them and it forced them to flee over here and then marry into the families over here, right? But they didn't told us that the Confederacy was all white people. Right? Didn't they tell us that? Because again, the, the grift has been that the white man has done everything wrong and everything this. When the reality is we already we fell to one another. We fell to people that look just like us, but have more like white friends. You know what I'm saying? Like they they just knew how to how to work them better. You know what I mean? And utilize them to displace us. That's what Othello was about. That's what Iago was doing. Think about the think about the story. Iago, everybody niggas kind of knew he was grinding. But Othello is so caught up in what he's telling him about his shorty. You see what I'm saying? That that tragic Moor found himself found himself uh, uh, caught up so much so that it wasn't until he out of her, he he out he killed her that he realized, oh, you was really doing it. And then and then before he could even really get the answers as to why. He said, no, I'm going to die without you even knowing why I did it. That's how sick these vendetta these niggas was with us. It's still like that. And Oppenheimer, the whole thing was really the issue. Again, they he, is his problem was he kept being around communists all the time. You know what I'm saying? But he wasn't one per se. He was about using whoever he needed to use to, to make this bomb and then wanted to act like what that he didn't know what they was going to do with it and then tried to flip it and try to get them to put rules and shit on it when he knew that they wasn't with none of that. 
So they use the communist thing to do it. But at the root of it is one dude, it was Robert Downey Jr. character, who was had the whole vendetta against him the whole time. And it finally came out on the congressional floor. So it's the same thing with these flags here. Like we've been taught that the Confederacy was evil and all that. However, there seem to be a lot of so-called American Indians, i.e. Moors, right, who had nationalities that seemed like they wasn't with none of this. <laughs> it was popping and decided to band together and do their thing. That's what it looked like. That's what all of this looks like to me. You know what I'm saying? But they'll spin it like, oh, well, this was just a small band of them or whatever. But it makes sense. Mos Moscogo, Moscogi, right? Moors go to Mos, like it's, it's all what it is, but I guess unless you see, right? So then when you see them with crescents and stars on their on they jackets and on their thing or whatever, you just think, oh, that's just Indians wearing totems. Like, no, the so-called American Indians was very careful with the stuff they wore. So don't try that. Just like they were trying to say, oh, well, the Moors, they came from the Romans. That's what the Romans called them. Then what then what did the Moors call themselves? Oh well, so you mean to tell me people who was fighting against Rome allowed Rome to call them something? <laughs> like how y'all sound? Like how do you even sound? Oh well Mauritania, you know, is over there and that's where it was in Africa. Yeah, but it didn't become that until like nineteen seventy. This congressional record say that it's over here in the, the Midwest, right on this map where it say Granada. Right on these maps that got all of these castles on the coast with all of these red flags. <laughs> Smallish flags all over the place with these giant trees. You see the joint right here? See what I'm saying? You see what I mean? See the X? See the black hole, the eclipse in the middle? This again, this was adopted by the French. We just read that the French and the British adopted the titles and the secular treaties from the Dutch, the the uh, Denmark, Norway, Germany, and all of that. And we just showed that them people that was there at that time looked like us, or look like people from there. The same way you got people that's melanated from Germany and all look, that's coming over here, making money and all of that, acting like us. That's where this is coming from. Could be. Yes. Good thing you said that about the mound builders. Look at the time period that they saying that all of these mound builders was doing their thing and all of that, right? Yes. When the Europeans first arrived, see, Moors. 
When the Europeans first arrived to what is now southeastern United States, they encountered a Negroid often described as copper-colored culture of people that later became known as mound builders. These mound builders is a general term referring to the indigenous inhabitants of North America who constructed various styles of earthen mounds for burial. Burial of what? Residential and ceremonial purposes. The Mississippian mound builders dated from when? 1000 CE to 1700 CE, right? Which is referred to as what? The Christian or the common era. So again, them people from 1000 CE, right when the, the whole thing was popping, right? So remember, we took over since the seventh century. So for that 1,000 years, all the way up to 1,700, right, with them adding the 700, creates the culture for the Europeans encountered. And this culture is considered to be probably the most advanced society that arose in America. This was a city building society supported by agriculture and marked by. So you mean to tell me these people who had the ability to build these cities, to build these aqueducts, to build these old things. They didn't have a name <laughs> other than Mound Builder. You see, you see what I'm saying? But these people existed at the same time that the so-called global Moorish Empire was taking control and was ruling everything up until the end of that reign that happened in the Common Era. And those people were forced to be this denationalized, to have no nationality or whatever, and then be forced to adopt the nationality of wherever they was from, which is anciently un an uncustomary action that their people would do. And their people actually fought and died. And even when we adopted those names and stuff, we were still forced and put under the jurisdiction of horrible things and all of that. Still. So what was the point? And then here we are all of these years later after the great schism that split them apart. Because after the great schism, as you notice, that was the end of the, the Roman so-called rule because then they split. That split eventually developed into the, the war between the Protestants and the Catholics. See what I'm saying? which led to the creation of the Church of Rome, which, by the way, they saying Kurt Middleton, Kate Middleton might be up out of here. I don't know if y'all heard. Yeah, they're saying she might be up out of here. Ain't nobody seen her in months. So they, I don't know if they could afford a second princess getting murked <laughs> under mysterious circumstances. Yeah, Swineburne Climber. That's the dude that allegedly murked um, Randolph. I couldn't remember his first name, but yeah, Swineburne Climber. They're saying the stuff that he published after Randolph died was all the Randolph stuff or variations of it. Yeah, so we, we've been like dealing with all of this and now that we're, we've in a sense gelled into establishing, okay, well, this is what I'm seeing myself as regards to what you're saying you are, whatever, but 
Like you can be all of these subgroups if you want. The issue is not that. The issue is don't impugn me because I am striving to localize this thing to something attainable to me in this hemisphere without me having to leave here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Without me having to leave here and, and then go somewhere else to then, you know, depend on the kindness of strangers right? who have been bred, who really only find out about the slavery thing till, we, till they get here. Then they go along with the story. And the next thing you know, they're going for acting jobs where they playing, where they playing like they was enslaved like us. And I mean, anybody can play a role. I'm just saying, don't exclude the people from here who actually went through the experience to do that. It's like they don't want that. They want somebody that can act like that. But they'll make Christopher Walken the king of New York. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he'll sell drugs with Larry Fishburne, and, and that's believable. Why? Because we buy it. But we be buying that. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Because it was a great movie. Because <laughs> Frank White was, you know what I'm saying? Frank was cool, man. And he had he had real niggas around him. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? And and that's what I mean. Like, we we were raised in a in a in a hybridized criminal culture. So we are bred to identify with the criminal. But if you really look at it historically, everybody that's been a criminal has been somebody that has been disregarded by the greater dominant society. And had to do certain things just to survive and maintain their community. At least that's how it started. That's how all mafias, gangs and shit start. Young men get together to stop people from taking advantage of them. That's how it started. Whoever the, the other person takes advantage of them, then that's them. But essentially, that's what they do. So we were hardwired to almost identify with criminality, which went along with the purpose of the 14th Amendment, which helped ease people into that more. And then once 1943 came and they went to the so-called original woman and told her, look, we're gonna give you $15 a month as long as you don't keep a man in the house, that allowed her now to exhibit some sort of power that she thought that the white woman had. When the white woman ain't had that power, she only had that at the strength of that white man, but she was able to keep it because she went along with anything he wanted to do. So that was the underlying uh, fine print that they left out. And once she went along with it, that led to a whole generation now of women on that. And then now men are out. They not it, they're not practicing husbandry. They out there, you know, doing what they doing. And it led to the breakdown of the family. And then now generations of people who are raised on welfare and criminality, you see? And so then systems can be created around them to help perpetuate that criminality while at the same time take advantage of the ignorance of everybody that's affected by it. That's the problem with the government, you see? The government of the District of Columbia. So when we show our people images like these, right? They want us to think that these were just one-offs, that these were just painters, like just painting them. When these were the majority, this is how the majority of art looked in the world. All of this Renaissance shit, all of this stuff happened in the 19th century. They brought all of that stuff in. Picasso, all he did was just go to different African exhibits and then just flip it. He'll tell you that himself. Read his biography. But these were actual people who were running the world. This was Toussaint Leoverture on the left. This, when they say Presta John, they're talking about the, the king or the line of successive kings of those Moors from those from that period that we're talking about.
it wasn't like this dude was a king, but then like everybody else around him was white. Like it, like it wasn't like that. And then after a certain time, after a successive the hundred years war and the thousand years war and the this war and the thirty year war and, and and right, then you get to the Indian wars and all of these different wars. B, it's it's pretty much a wrap after after a time. Yes, that's exactly what they do. He said when the Africans, principal said when the Africans come here, they are told during the civics test that they that they take to become naturalized citizens that we were imported here as slaves from Africa, perpetuating the agenda and false history. Exactly. When all you got to do is ask them what stories that they told you about what members of your family were taken. And what did your family do to find them after they were there? Nobody got a story like that. You ain't never seen no Af no story of Africans leaving Africa to find their long lost cousin or whatever who was enslaved. They even now trying to make it seem like Abu Bakari and Mansa Musa wasn't even real. They trying to say that that wasn't real, but that never happened. <laughs> that they was made up by European explorers. Like what? The Indians of southeastern United States. When Tuscaloosa, when Tus when Tuscaloosa met DeSoto, Raginel tells us his head was covered by a kind of coif like the Amza, uh, so that his headdress was like a moor's, which gave him the which gave him an aspect of authority. This is the first time that the headdress of an Indian of this section was compared to an oriental turban, the resemblance being much more striking when European handkerchiefs and other textiles took the place of native materials. That's what they do. They say, oh, you know how to make, you know how to make butter? Well, you it take you what, a week? Well, we got it, this new type of butter where it only take three hours. Everybody, it, it, we cutting the time. So if you sell my butter, I'll take your butter back. You see what I'm saying? And then you make it cool. Meanwhile, this nigga is selling your butter for like $120, right? He didn't gave you some fake run in the mill butter that's giving you cancer, <laughs> everything else. And nobody is the wiser. This is how they've been doing it. Why? Because nobody has a nationality to stand on. That's what's happening with the, with the Americans right now, with the citizens of the United States. They've been so trained to hate the place that they born that now other people coming over here trying to take it, they almost stuck. They almost trying to gaslight you into saying that, well, if you was really about equality, you shouldn't care who came over here. Well, you don't care about it. Well, you was against white supremacy, right? So you shouldn't care what happens or, or what happens to this place. You should want people to come in here and, and, you know, burn up shit and shit on the ground and do all the stuff they doing. That's destroying white supremacy. Right. This what this what they think. But what they're not telling you is that the white supremacy they're talking about is the constitutional republic. They're not talking about. The average clan member, they are in the clan. Like they're not talking about the average racist. They are the racist. They not they not talking about that. They're talking about the actual fabric of the country, the constitution, the thing that actually make the country what it is. That's what they think white supremacy is. To the point where I saw a black chick on TV, and this this bird brain was saying that prosecuting Black people for violent crime is white supremacy. <laughs> they was like, so so all crime, so like any type of crime that they lock you up for is white supremacy. So like, there's no limit. Like, she's like, no, anybody that is trying to, you know, get locked up, you trying to lock somebody up or whatever, and they happen to be, you know, black or whatever, and they committing a the crime, they usually doing that because they're in the in its position where they, they need to do that. You're like, okay, so even in murder, even, <laughs> they see like, yeah. Like, this is how crazy these people are. 
But when you look at her and you investigate the, the person, you find out she's she's uh what you call it, you know, mass college educated. She got a high government job, right? No, no children, no husband, uh, so-called lesbian. So like she's she gotta say that stuff. She gotta do that. Yeah, and, and this is who they use everything. This is who they run everything through because they can always use the racism through the black woman, black man thing. Well, really the black woman thing. Really, when they say diversity, they really want a black female, lesbian, wheelchair. Um, it, if she was Jewish or interracial, that would even help. Like they need, it can't just be that. Like you gotta, they got it such that you gotta just keep the diversity thing going. Like you gotta always trump the last person, <laughs> whatever they said that they was. Yeah, so yeah, so they're gonna sell handicapped baby dolls all of a sudden. Like they're gonna do all of this to make it seem like people are mentally ill because most people have are bought into this shit. When when they say European, most people automatically think of Caucasian. When, like I said, the reality is there is no Europe. It, it never existed. It's just a designation that these West Asians wanted to create to go along with the nobility thing that they was pumping to come from under the yoke of Genghis, who was running the eastern portion of the global empire. They couldn't even come over here with us. They couldn't even, nothing with us until we all fell. Then they was like, okay, they, they low enough, they low enough to make it happen. That's why you had, that's why, like I said, when they say Europeans, like this, you got to remember, this is what it was first. So the people they brought in after World War One, after World War Two after the, the world fairs and stuff, these are the people who were now trained to be that and adopted whatever customs and created whatever customs that they was gonna go along with to be that. But all of the infrastructure, all of the architecture, all of the aqueducts, all of the underground tunnels, all of the, the all of that stuff was made by the people who was already there. Who were these people? Who were, displaced brought over here and then created a a substrata to become part of the the upper class that they always do and then use the proxy class to take control of the families that they married into it's really simple So the king of Italy can also was also the king of Ethiopia. You see, he held the throne of Ethiopia, Albania, right? And he was the emperor of Ethiopia. Victor Emmanuel, a.k.a. Haile Selassie. Then you got King James. We already know him with the Bible and all of that. And then you got Anne, who was the grand, who, who was the great grand, uh, mother of all of them, of all of them, right under Charlotte. Well, no, I think they killed, they killed Anne. I think they killed her. But essentially you get the, you get the purpose. Do I have any questions?
appreciate it more. So yeah, everything they got, they got from somebody else. What they tell us is is old, is really new. What's new is really old. They got us looking at all these different places. They try to anchor ancient, like decrepit gods, try to put new faces on them. My son playing the game in the back. Um, they try to put new faces on them and all of that, and then try to turn it into something that we ain't never seen before, or try to make us forget. That's why anything with the semblance of newness is so absorbed so quickly, because everything sucks, because nobody is there to produce anything of cultural value. Everything is whack. Everything is whack because everybody that's doing something is down with the agenda, and none of these dudes got any got any um this nigga man. Uh none of these dudes got any wherewithal as to how to work any of this shit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we have European names today in our families, most of us. Those of us that um were blessed to have other types of names or whatever, that's cool. But those of us that were actually born in this place and actually come from the people who helped establish this place come from a long line of Moors who, again, were of the barbarous nations that they refer to as Indians. The only problem with being an Indian is, unfortunately, it puts you under the, the Negro Act. The Negro Act is also called the Civil Rights Act, which is also called the... Um, Civil Rights Act, the Negro Act. Yeah, it's also called the Civil Rights Act because they cease to recognize everybody as that. Uh, case in point, we can show and prove. Yeah, we could do that real quick. Um, yeah, as you see, 1871 Act, according to the Indian Appropriation Act. See, they appropriated the Indian. When you appropriate something, what does that mean? That means that you 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 taking it. You you about to make money off it. No longer was any group of Indians in the United States recognized as an independent nation by the federal government. Moreover, Congress directed that all Indians should be treated as what? Individuals and legally designated what? Wards of the federal government. You see what I'm saying? So don't get mad when you see gangbangers claiming shit or whatever, whatever, claiming shit that don't belong to them. Like, you, you ain't doing nothing no different. <laughs> you claiming federal wardship. That ain't no different than them banging on each other based upon what they whatever turf or block that they think they, they have the right to kill each other for. Now, when you're doing the same shit, but like I said, remember, it's all based on the northern and the southern jurisdiction. The same way we read that the whole Great Schism came um, between the east and the west, just like the east coast, west coast beef, right? Well, you had the... the the north and the south, the, the south was against the north. Well, what south and what north? Which one? The original one before the New Madrid earthquake event, the Carrington event, or the one after? And which north and south are you talking about? Are you talking about geographic location? Or are you talking about Freemasonic jurisdiction? I think you're talking about the latter. And you just acting like it's the, the former. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what they do. That's what the whole Orient, Grand Orient, Occident shit is about. It's always about splitting up what you think the shit is into something else. So, yes, original people in Norway and places like that, they had blue eyes. 
blue within blue eyes. Yeah. They did that too. Because they descended from a people who had broken away and done their own thing and created whatever recessive traits based upon the homogenous uh, area that they was in. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah. So you said um, John Hansen. So John Hansen or John Hansen Bay came from a Swedish uh, noble type family. And they were very uh, prestigious when it came to business. And he was able to consolidate a huge silver hoard through his family's dealings because of their nobility and all that. But because he was born here, he had access to, you know, the American point of view, the American concern. And due to what was happening allegedly in Britannia, right? Uh, they decided that they wanted to break away from the from Britain. See, they wanted to break away from Britain. They wasn't trying to break away from the greater empire. Though. They just wasn't feeling what what the, the Britannic, his Britannic Majesty was doing. You see what I'm saying? Who also was a Moor. So Hansen, being of that Swedish thing and them always playing a neutral thing, took sympathy and started to invest himself in the the ways of government, blah, 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 and then eventually started to fund the government with the silver. He's the one that paid for all of the shoes in Washington and them niggas needed and kept them niggas from freezing at at, uh, at the Potomac and all of that shit. That was him. He the one to shut all that down. He the one to pay for all of that. So he, being the president under the original uh, republic, well, confederation, you see, he was like the go-between between the imperial majesty, the, the sultans and all of that, and the the um, nobility and the common people. And so they all invested, or he invested in creating the Articles of Confederation, which eventually became that. When you read the the Articles of Confederation at the end, it says that we give great respect and honor to the great governor of the world. The great governor of the world in that case, in that document is referring to the Sultan of that time. Yeah, all of the Irish, get the book, the Black Irish of Jamaica, get the book, How the Irish Became White, Get the book, um, Irish Became White, The Black Irish in Jamaica. Um, well, it was, it was a, it was a loose confederacy because each state was its own country. So it had its own maritime, and you, you see what I'm saying? Like it was different than it is now. So each state right now has its national guard and all of that, right? And its own little fake Coast Guard and all that. But like they weren't entrenched army, like like armies back then, the time we're talking about, these are straight armies in Mississippi, straight armies in Rhode Island, you dig? So once they kept getting kicked out during the successive wars after the Great Schism between the, the East and the West, right? This is the fall, this is again the, the descendants of the fallers of Rome. And these are the niggas that took over from us. These are the niggas who got their money together and bought the kingdom, right? And then used the religion and the denationality to then fudge the deal and then take over shit and then put everybody under them by making everybody have to follow their, their, uh, their religious tenets. And then they find out everybody, that's why they wanted you to convert to Catholicism, especially because through confession, they could find out everything. And then ingrain that, ingrain that over centuries to the point now where people make confessions, say whatever. You know what I'm saying? But all of that, like I said, came after the fact, after the fall of everything, after them reconsolidating themselves and them trying to figure out what they was going to do with the empire and shit after the millennial reign and all that stuff. 
and both the Christian powers worked together and eventually split. The Greek speakers went one way, the Latin speakers went the other. Exactly. Yeah, the Confederate States and the Barbary Powers. The Confederate States fell under the Barbary Powers. You could say that. Whereas the Barbary States, we could say are those specific states, Tunis, Morocco, Tripoli, and uh, Libya, right? Or what they call foot in ancient times. But again, that's ancient. I mean, that's our uh, modern times. In the ancient, the Barbary powers now represents all the barbarous nations over here that paid for those satellite kingdoms to be established over there. As you see here, the Moorish cavalry under Lucidius Quietus fighting against fighting against the Dacians, right? In the Trojan War, in the Trojan War, all locks. You can see here, the first council of Nicaea, everybody's melanated, because this is how it was. This was the kingdom. And then as they fall in, they're trying to figure out how to keep what's left of it going. But eventually start warring with each other. Right? But it's all old, it's all ancient. Anybody else? This is written in the stone, in the stone itself. Aleph Lam Lam Ha. Or La Ilaha Ilala Ilala. Right? Which is the same thing. But all it all it also is is the hand. You know what I'm saying? Anybody else? Um, the Noble Jali, the question was, what do you think about most Americans celebrating Ramadan? I think if you want to do that, you can do that. But there's no specific uh, uh, provision or whatever in the Circle 7 or whatever that says that you have to do that. Like, fasting should probably be a part of everybody's life in some form or fashion. You know what I'm saying? But to do it specifically during Ramadan says that you are a Muslim. And unless you took a Shahada or agreed to be a Muslim per se, then you don't necessarily have to participate in it just, cause, just because you as a more happen to be Islamic. You know what I mean? Like some Christians don't eat pork. You know what I'm saying? But like most Christians do. Right, even though the things say they're not supposed to do that. So, you know, you do what you you do what helps you be better. Not what you do, not because you feel like if you don't, you're not being pious or some shit. That's just a little extra. Yeah. So all of this, this versions that I'm showing you of Allah with the hand and how it all basically busts down to the same thing is just another vari variation of what this is. It's the same, it's the same hand. Again, the difference between us and how we look at stuff and how they look at stuff. Uh, 
Uh, we need as many people to be as civically literate as possible and as spiritually uh, uncompromisable as possible, in my opinion. What's the use of getting everything back to just turn it back into what it was? Like, you know? It might be taking this long because we're not ready. Because we're still beefing over, you know, who's what, what, what custom they practice, or you know, what this, what this person who's not a Moor says about Moors. Like, who cares? You think Rothschild cares what they say about him? He don't care. He don't care at all. You know. And um, that's the main thing, just just striving to be the you reach your level of excellence, inshallah, and then helping other people want who want to do that without trying to convert them into doing that. Because that's the problem. Anybody else? Okay, cool. So yeah, so as we close out, this is basically like you can see like a different visual representation maybe of what it can kind of be or what it might have been in this regard if we had to, okay, divvy up who was what based upon phenotype or customary dress or habit or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So these are the moors over here, moors in Granada, Britain, Chata, see, greater empire, barbarian, you know, the barbarian states or the barbarous states dealing with the piracy and all that. And you got the Holy Roman Empire, the Lombards, the Burgundies, the Northumbrians, the, the Westingtons, the, the Saxons, all of these are old black nobilities from the Grimori line, Grimaldi line. Then you see, then we move to Moors and Moors from like North Central South America, South Pacific, and then finally right back. You know? This is actually the real Sultan Abdul Aziz. The one in this, I don't know who that, the other dude who they show in the circle seven, I think that's the, that's part of the op. I don't think that's the real dude. Because all of the real ones, because there was a bunch of dudes named Abdul Aziz at the time. That's how they also get you. So I wanted to show you the original Moroccan picture. All right. So thank you guys for coming through. Thank you guys for the $30 to uh, DOS DS418 and Cash App, um, as well as uh, through Ducateers and gmail.com via PayPal. Definitely check out Um Check on there. It has the links to all of the different apps and stuff that I have on my social media as well as uh, the ADOT app, definitely check that out. Check out www.cordobaorganics.com. If you haven't already, that'd be great. Um, definitely spread the word and uh, definitely please uh, support the DOSCO 418. We got that out there, it's doing well. We're going into our second printing now. So thank everybody that's uh, supported. And uh, I appreciate, you know, all the, uh, support over the years in doing this because uh, it definitely hasn't been easy so again love and like everybody you need to hit me up hit me up at house of l at hotmail.com and uh again guys be well facts at our more